Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here with theCUBE at Red Hat Summit in Boston, Massachusetts, 2023. Also, Ansible Fest folded in as well. It's open source, it's cloud native, it's edge, it's compute. We got two great guests here. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, Rob Stretcher, the analyst, breaking it all down. We got Greg Ernst, Corporate Vice President, Sales and Marketing Group, General Manager for America's Region for Intel, and Todd Pavon, President of Strategic Partnerships. Gentlemen, thanks for joining theCUBE. Hey, thank good you for having you us. Good to see you again. Got a CUBE alumni here, oh, yes. good first time CUBE alumni. Now you're in the distinguished <laughs> alumni <laughs> family. There you go. Right. Gotta get the tattoo, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're here at Red Hat Summit. Dell, Intel, Red Hat working together. What's the relationship? You guys had big news here, saw the appliance with Red Hat, that's a big wave. More compute, more servers, a lot more action. People want performance, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> What's the relationship, Dell, that's Intel, cool. and Red Hat? Yeah, so as you said, at Intel, we're, we're the computing company and continue to innovate, drive more compute so that every company in the world can extract value from it, create products, services that help everyone. Um, but we realized early in our history, uh, a semiconductor by itself is, uh, you can't extract the value. And so early in Intel's history, we made a decision, open source, open community, uh, and partner ecosystem. And in our history, Dell, uh, they're our largest customer, they're our largest technology partner, and, uh, and, and Red Hat, you, everything we do, um, we start, uh, we start and drive with with Red Hat as well. In order, first with Rail, now 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 with OpenShift. First yeah. with pub, uh, private data centers. Now public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. So it's uh, Dell, Dell and Red Hat are key partners of ours. John, yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, as you say, look, it's great. I mean, we've obviously been partners a long time, as I shared with uh, everyone this morning. I mean, uh, we've been a partner with uh, Red Hat for 20 plus years. But we really feel like we've doubled down on the partnership, you know, over the last year or so, and that was the big announcement this morning, right? And so when we talk about double down, we talk yeah. about um, co-engineering and innovating new offers and solutions. Yeah. And today we had a big announcement with our uh, Apex Cloud for OpenShift, yeah. and we're really excited about that, um, enabling our 30, 40,000 global sellers around the world to take this to our customers, <laughs> our hundreds of partners. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, look, with Intel, powered by Intel. Yeah. With Red Hat, with Dell, there's three unbelievable brands and uh, that are trusted, and we think we really, really have good impact. Yeah, and and with the big AI wave coming, you can just see more and more needs for having more faster servers. There was a time, you know, it was the Cube's 13 season, doing Cube interviews over the years. There was an era where the cloud was growing. Don't talk about speeds and feeds. It's not about the hardware. I'm like, I'm a hardware guy. I love hardware. Come on. And then, oh, it's where software is really the hardware. We're now in. We're past that now. You're yeah. seeing people acknowledge. That, that physics at getting down the lower yeah. physical layer with software, with silicon, with advanced uh, compute, that's going to really, that empowered the AI movement. Yeah. And now with AI having all the horsepower, software and hardware at that level is a big deal. People care about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, at Intel, we love it. We, <laughs> we, we're, we're geeks, spin the propeller nonstop <laughs> about hardware. Uh, but just one example right now, we, we launched our fourth generation Xeon a few months ago, and it's got built-in accelerators for matrix math. Uh, I think the world's learning that AI performs really well in matrix math. We saw that a few years ago, we integrated those accelerators in. Um, and now that that's one of the reasons why we work closely with Red Hat, because well, Red Hat, what, what you're able to do is almost take a straw straight down in the CPU and, and make those accelerators accessible for all the applications that run on top. Yeah. Uh, you and I were talking before we turned on the cameras around natural language processing. Yeah. Uh, the accelerators that we we're just talking about, 12x improvement for natural language processing yeah. in the Xeon. It's integrated in PyTorch. Uh, it's integrated in TensorFlow. And that's that's why we love working with Red Hat because you all create that straw, like yeah. I said, and, and make those accelerators Great, that's a great call out, Todd. You know, this brings up the point of the innovation up and down the stack yeah. again. Reminds me of the old OSI model, we're dating <laughs> ourselves now, but you know, physical to application layer, AI and capabilities will be embedded in every layer. You're seeing that obviously now, but it creates a partnership. You're yeah. seeing more partnerships, more integrations. Yeah. You run strategic partnerships with Dell, what are some of the things that you see coming that are challenges and opportunities that you're you're going to help solve for customers as they realize, I have to have a hard and secure solution that yeah. performs great 
and enables this next wave. Yeah, look, I mean, as the world's gotten more complex and technology's moving so fast, it's, it's clear that you got you need partnerships in order to be successful. And if you can go take the work as partners by integrating and, and innovating together, you're removing the work that our customers would have to do on their own. And that is the key, right? So, you know, as I, you know, as I shared earlier, you know, the challenge that all of our customers have is that they are the key to the business succeeding or failing. And that means, you know, if they can't spend the majority of their time and energy and budget on maintenance, they got to work on strategic initiatives. And if we can offload that work by giving them an integrated turnkey offer and solution where they don't have to worry about it, it just works. It accelerates yeah. their time to market. It does it in a resilient, safe way. That enables them to spend time on the things that are important and strategic to them. And, and, and again, I'm going to bring this up as more of a tell sign as well. I think this is a indicator of how the future is going to go, especially with the edge and the intelligent yeah. edge. Your announcement with um, Red Hat with the appliance, take a minute to explain that because I think this is a significant announcement here. It kind of gets lost in the AI hype, but yeah. it's blocking and tackling. It's an edge device, it's server, it's powerful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, ba basically. Red Hat appliance. Like, yeah, basically, on. we built a, a fully turnkey platform based on Red Hat OpenShift, fully integrated into uh, Dell, um, you know, uh, software-defined storage. Um, and the, the beauty of it is there's a lot of engineering that we have built between the Dell infrastructure and OpenShift, engineering that typically customers would have to go do. So what this allows customers to go do, they can rapidly deploy and start building out applications day one. Yeah. They don't have to go build out that infrastructure themselves. They don't have to deploy OpenShift. It's all done for them. And then if they have issues with that, they just go to one, one company for support and, it's, and it's, it's seamless, it's resilient, it's compliant, it's all the things that you expect. But the reason why that's so important is all about trying to build apps much faster. Um, and do things much faster than you would traditionally have done, and hopefully that's that's the goal of what we're trying to deliver. So we're we're look, we're super excited about it. Um, you know the partnership has been a great one, but we really doubled down on the partnership, and obviously the long-standing partnership with Intel um, makes this to me super important. And, and back to your earlier question, ecosystem partnerships are the way of the future. You yeah. you can't do things on your own, yeah. and if you can do them with a strategic partner and you can bring that to our customers jointly. Um, that to me is where you really differentiate yourself. Yeah, and I think I think that's a great point. The question I would have for you guys is, I, plus I agree by the way, if that if you believe that, then the next question is, how do you make sure that they are enabled? Yeah. Okay, to be either sustainable or disruptive. I mean, that's classic, right? So I'm going to continue to innovate, or I'm a new entrant. I want to build on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to that? From from an actual enterprise yeah. enablement. Account? Okay, I think yeah. I, I'm, you got. I got a lot of players, I got a lot of ecosystem yeah. partners. Yeah. Support's one, obviously, yeah. one, but like. Well, what I love what, what, what Dell and Red Hat have done what, what, with us, uh, the few challenges I hear from I, CIOs, IT, all the time, right? One, they, there's a lot of value for them to have a single company manage this, service it, deploy it. Yeah. And, and, and that, yeah. that alone, that Dell. Yeah. Uh, delivering that. Uh, the other thing I hear a lot of is despite everything that Red Hat does to build out the number of OpenShift developers, rail administrators, there's still a shortage. And and it, it the skill set is rare. Uh, there's a lot of them, but there's not enough. Yeah. And that's and that's the second thing that I love that Dell's By the way, doing that's here. A, this is a great point. I mean to interrupt yeah. you, but I just I just left a customer right before we came here. And they were telling us their biggest issue is they don't have the right skills. And if we can help them go deliver a solution where they don't require as many skills, they can go change their skill sets and apply them to the yeah. things that are strategic and important. And, yeah. and that, I mean, that's the key takeaway, right? Is again, allowing them to go focus on the things that are strategic yeah. um, and helping them retool and repurpose those skill sets. So I think you hit yeah. on, on a great well, point. Well, yeah, I think that I, frees them up to invest elsewhere. Yeah. Well, I want to ask Craig, dude, this is your a killer point right. with then you got, okay, security. You guys right. invested a ton in security, the physical layer. Yeah. You tie that in with Red Hat security software supply chain. I mean, you're a car manufacturer, you're going to have a hard top. Yeah. You can then enable to bring their own foundation models in to the work application yeah. workload, so you kind of decouple exactly. that Exactly, and piece. especially as it moves to the edge, and as we said earlier, multiple clouds, there's unintentional yeah. vulnerabilities that could get created by the users, and that that's what Intel's yeah. work with Red Hat and Dell. And so how did it all come about? Them. I mean, I, I just love this appliance idea of, the, of Red Hat. It's a, I can see deployment, you got built-in security from Intel, all the yeah, benefits that seamless, comes yeah. with those years of relationships, but as an app developer, it's out there and not a lot of configurations in the network. Yeah, it's a node in the works. network, it's secure. I'm not going to care about my app, it's going fast. Yeah. Um, how did it all come together? Just 
one day you guys yeah. drew it up on the board and said, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, Every, that's, yeah, yeah, you go deep to the go, go to the post, run Look, the you, end you'll, zone. You'll, you'll appreciate this. So, you know, uh, ma- many years ago when I first joined EMC, which obviously is now Dell, I went on a sales call with Dick Egan, which is the E and yeah. EMC. And we were with a big bank at the time. And the bank said to Dick, how do you come up with your great innovation ideas? And he said, I never get in the way of a customer. Customer always comes back and say, I wish you could go do this. And we listen, we innovate, we iterate. And that's how we've always invented all of our new solutions. It's the same thing here, right? So we heard loud and clear from customers that they were looking for a way to accelerate um, the OpenShift platform powered by Dell and Intel technology. And so when you hear that, you're like, all right, how can we go do that? And that gets the ball rolling. And then you get the engineering teams together, you get alignment, um, you, you work as if you're actually one integrated engineering team. And then you put the power of the go to market behind it. And then it's not lost on the trust of the brands behind it. Because you, you, when you brought up AI, you know, it's moving so fast. But to me, trust is going to be so important in this AI landscape. Yeah. And when you have three brands like Intel, Red Hat, and Dell supporting you know, these solutions, customers trust those brands because we've been here a long time yeah. and we're not going anywhere. Yeah. I think what's also interesting about Apex and what Dell announced and the whole Apex line is being cloud adjacent yeah. and being near. I think with sovereignty and especially with AI and where you actually train your models, where's your data, you know, you have France and others that are really clamping down, yeah. Austria. Is that a really a key component to this as well? I, so my opinion, compliance is a critical component to this, right? Cl- compliance and security, data integrity, um, how you manage that, um, how you provide transparency to that are absolutely critical. And, and, and if you're big banks or big financial institutions, just as an example, you need to have that or you can't make those investments. So, yeah, yeah no, I completely agree with you. That is certainly important. Um, and again, I think we're lucky because of the companies we have and the investments we've made in those areas that what we build takes advantage of that. Well, yeah, I, I think, think the edge too is huge. Okay, sorry. Oh, I was going to say one of the things that makes Dell unique, that PowerEdge server lineup, but also the Dell EMC storage. Yeah. And as you said, that when it comes to data sovereignty, the location of the data and the storage yeah. and building the stuff and some of the blueprints that Dell brought to the solution, that's one of the things that it's complex yeah. for customers. And yeah. they're going to they're going to see what di- the work Dell is done here with Apex, with Red Hat. It's going to make their life easier. Yeah, and I think one of the other points to, your, to the Apex and the is equation is cost. Yeah. And not that I'm a repatriate fan. I'm not a repatriate. And I love the New England Patriots. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you are in Boston. Repatriation, so, yeah, repatriation uh. means cloud is going to still be there, but now you've got on-premise and edge. And, and yeah. you look at cost of ownership, which you guys are masters at. I know that for a fact. We're covering it. But then you add in like over-provisioning concepts, you yeah. can look at certain use cases and say, I would rather have stack servers yeah. at the edge than cloud from a GPU or AI perspective. Because you kind of know what you need, yeah. right? And yeah. people are getting more out of hardware that's not in the cloud for certain use cases. Yeah. That's not repatriation, that's just re- refactoring for cloud operations. So so there's a whole like trend going on now where people are starting to see, yeah. okay, I want a box, I want to have it stacked, I want to be at the edge or yeah. whatever for a use case. Yeah. Uh, this if is you, huge. If you're a business owner or a business, you don't care actually where the workload resides, just as long as you get it when you want it at the cost you're willing to pay for it. But if you're a CIO, <laughs> you have to manage that. So you're almost a broker of these workloads, right? We're, you know, based on security, based on risk and cost, um, availability, yeah. and then you do figure, is this edge on premise, the data center, cloud, and then you have all that flexibility to decide where it goes. So if you can enable CIOs to make those trade-offs of where these workloads go based upon yeah. um, those requirements, but then the business can get what they want when they want it, then it works. Yeah, and I, I think part of part of the whole solution is also the flexibility from a cost perspective, yeah. right? Because there is the pay-as-you-go component to it, as well as the, that it is hardware and software and all of that performance. Is that has that been a big key with the, the extended ecosystem? So outside of the hyperscalers, and when you get to some of those other MSPs and things that are partnering with you on this, I think yeah, it's it's a proven way that companies are are managing their balance sheet these yeah. days. And so kudos yeah. to Dell to figure out yeah. the f- financial balance sheet ability to bring that on-prem mm-hmm. mod or that same model to 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 a hybrid motion as a, as a pure cloud. Yeah, I think you have to have that flexibility. You got to give yeah. that flexibility of choice um, and funding and, and how you're making those financial decisions. Um, and so, yeah, that, I mean, that's the beauty of our Apex line. It provides that choice and flexibility. And, and I think that's just part of uh, how you have to deliver any of your services or solutions today. 
three. Now on the Intel side, just processor wise, it's fourth gen Xeon? I believe fourth. That's the fourth we didn't yeah. even gen. Confirm. Yeah. Yes. Fourth yeah. was What's seven. under the hood? What's yeah. the big Intel piece here yeah. that's the, the, the power? Is it the power and the solution? Well, it'll be, it'll start with our fourth gen and then we'll, we'll, we'll expand it to our yeah. full portfolio of Xeon products. Um, one of the things that we've done unique, as I mentioned earlier with this generation, we've built in a lot of different accelerators. I, I, I talked to the matrix acceleration for, um, uh, for AL. We've also done a lot with like, uh, we call it QAT. So it allows compression, decompression, encryption, uh, Dell takes advantage of that line as well. That's a huge benefit as you're moving data from yeah. one cloud to another cloud. You can imagine that the encryption of, of the data really saves cost on, on core count. Todd, uh, when are we going to see this in market? Is there a time frame? Did you I, so yeah, by second half of the year, you'll see it in market is, uh, is the timetable. So uh, not too far off, right? And then, <laughs> uh, and there's certainly some things that we could do as a precursor and steps to take with customers today. So if they want to adopt now, there's some things we can we can share with customers today also. What was the big uh, feedback you got from the announcement? Did people go, wait a minute, were they were they like surprised? I mean, I was totally surprised. Yeah. I was pretty I was like, that's I, that's huge. Yeah, uh, no, we've gotten awesome feedback because you know it's it's funny as we're running, you know, Red I'm at Red Hat Summit here in Boston. We got Dell Tech World in Vegas. So I'm keep going back and forth with my peers there. The feedback from customers, partners, analysts, everybody has been tremendous. Yeah. Because, you know, back to the point, this yeah. is customers are looking for these types of solutions today yeah. when you take, you know, world leaders in innovation companies yeah. like uh, Intel, Dell, and Red Hat, yeah. and you bring them together in a turnkey offer, and you can deliver that, um, yeah. and you can help them accelerate their time to market. Um, that's that's what customers are looking for. So no, the excitement's yeah. been great. And I saw Michael's interview, Dave Vellante. I was, yeah. I had FOMO because you know, I wasn't <laughs> there. Normally I do the interviews a little You're stuck with us. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, you're going to appreciate this. Uh, when I interviewed Pat Gelsinger last time I talked to him, was before he joined Intel, yeah. um, he was right on hybrid cloud from day one. I remember talking to him early on. He always said it's an architectural play. Certain industry inflection points, it's an architectural play. And I think when you start looking at yeah. the edge and how this is all going to come together, it's essentially a distributed computing paradigm. So we're kind of in this architectural game right now where, okay, we get how cloud works. We've got on-premise with hybrid, check. Yeah. Now you got another multi-cloud slash edge kind of dynamic happening. I mean, this is going to be a compute, it's going to be a data game. It, all yeah. that is right in you guys' wheelhouse. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? What's your view? Well, it's, it's why we've been excited for the maturation, the just incredible maturation of containers. Because containers and Kubernetes, and an open shift. It's, it's what really makes this all, to your point, all possible and, uh, and gives IT organizations a chance at, at actually fulfilling the, this hybrid cloud concept. Uh, it's, it's why for our, our product line, we designed first for hybrid cloud features, the capabilities that we put in there enable it. I mean, to Pat's early point, it's, um, and um, it takes a few years to design and produce a semiconductor. So when Pat was <laughs> all in on hybrid cloud early, uh, I guess no, no shock then he came back to Intel and said, all right, let, let, let's make sure the semiconductor product yeah. line supports We had it. some great conversations. I won't go into it. It's all it's yeah. been a meme already on the web. Todd, I'll give you the last word. What's on your agenda? Strategic partnerships, ecosystems is the future. What's your strategy? What's, what do you got going on? Yeah, look, I think anything, we, you're going to see us continue to go evolve our strategic partnerships where it's, where it's about trying to simplify what is a pretty darn complex world for our customers. Yeah. And, you know, we talked a lot about Dell Tech world from ground to cloud, cloud to ground, anything you can do to make that seamless. So back to that example I gave where the business doesn't care, but how do we enable yeah. um, CIOs to go deliver um, a, a transformational infrastructure where they can manage workloads regardless if they're edge, on-prem, or in the cloud and make that completely yeah. seamless, you're going to see us invest <laughs> in those areas with those partners yeah. to make that seamless. And the exciting thing, AI is going to change the game. It's going to change It's it going to make things go faster. Yet again. Yet again. <laughs> Moore's Law, they know, what, they know what fast is. You guys know what fast is. Yeah. Craig, thanks for Moore's coming on. Moore's Law is doing well, thank yeah. you. Greg, Todd, thanks for coming hey, on. Thank you, appreciate okay, it. Okay, Cube, live coverage here at Red Hat Summit with Ansible Fest folded. I'm John Furrier and Rob Stretchy. We'll be right back with our next segment after this short break. <laughs>